So today we're going to discuss water concentration in oil. So this is a very important concept of an oil condition monitoring program. We spend a lot of time focusing on particle analysis and we need to also focus on water contamination as an important part of monitoring our oil. So how does water enter the oil? So there are a few ways that, that water can enter the oil. So it can, it can enter from environmental conditions, humidity, uh, it can also enter from compromised seals, so very important that uh, our seal maintenance is, is good. And then it can also enter from condensation in cooler areas of the equipment. So it's important for us to understand that there's three phases of water, and some are actually more dangerous than others. So it's important to understand that, that there's three different phases and what each one of those phases means in the, in the water concentration process. So first off, we have dissolved water. So it is uh, the molecules are, are dispersed molecule by molecule. Typically, the oil will remain clear. And then we start off, then it gets to the emulsified phase. I'm sure most of you have seen this in your oil. If you've ever had a water concentration problem, the oil gets pretty foggy, it'll get cloudy. Um, and what this is, this is actually microscopic droplets of water uh, in uh, that are dispersed throughout the solution. So once we hit that point, where uh, it's no longer an emulsion and we start getting this free water that's sitting in the bottom of the sump or the tank. So why does water sit at the bottom of the tank? Well, it has to do with specific gravity of the water versus the oil. So uh, typically in PAOs, so in PAO synthetics and mineral oils, we have a specific gravity that's less than one. And the specific gravity of water is one. So that water is going to sink to the bottom of the sump or the tank. So if you've ever seen that, that's, that's the point where you have free water in your system. So what are the effects of high moisture? So what can this actually do to your oil? So first of all, viscosity is one of the most important things uh, when choosing the right oil. So fluid film is automatically compromised when we have excessive water concentration. So that hydrodynamic film is being disrupted. And we also have oxidation and a tan increase that will also occur with uh, an excessive water concentration occurring. Then these last two here have to do with bearing damage. So we can have hydrogen embrittlement, and then we can also have cavitation that can be occurring too as a result of, of high moisture. So how, how can we go about measuring moisture? And how can we measure it on site? How has it typically been done? How has it been done in a lab environment if you've been outsourcing your, your uh your oil samples to get it monitored, more than likely they're running a Carl Fisher titration. So this is done with uh, using iodine to do the titration. You have a generator electrode and a detector electrode. There's a Carl Fisher reagent, which is a rather harsh reagent. So this is specifically done in a lab environment. And a very precise method, and it can get down to very low levels of parts per million. Then we have the fluid scan device, which is part of our mini lab system here at Spectro. This is an IR device, which also measures parts per million and can be related back to the Carl Fisher method as well. And then I'm sure most of you have also heard that there's relative humidity sensors available. There's also online sensor technology. And then finally, there's a very down and dirty method, if you will, of, of the crackle test. And the crackle test is simply just dropping some oil on a hot plate and there you have it and you see how much it fizzes and, and then you can correlate that to a parts per million. Uh, that's a pretty, pretty broad methodology. There are definitely some limitations with that, but in a pinch, that works as well. So setting alarm limits, that's always a challenge. Setting alarm limits and, and knowing what we're getting and what we should be getting. And specifically with turbine oils, it's gonna be a little bit lower versus a engine oil, which may be a little bit higher. So setting alarm limits is a, is a bit of a challenge, but keeping those things in mind of turbine oils versus engine oils is a good rule of thumb and helping us determine what those limits should be. So, but there's also some ASTM standards out there that are really good to provide some guidance. So consulting with your OEM is great, but also familiarizing yourself with these ASTM standards, ASTM 4378 and ASTM 6224. These are just general practices, general standards to helping you set alarm limits for your oil. So good reads and worth looking at before you consult with your OEM. So let's move on to solutions. So once you, let's just say you get a, a high reading back, and now what? What do I do? As the, the reliability engineer on site, you have a lot of different options. Depending on how much money you want to spend, how much time you have, depending on the criticality of the component, there's a lot of different options that you have as far as dealing with the high moisture levels. 
So you have vacuum dehydration methods, gravity separation, centrifugal separation, coalescing filters, heating elements. And lastly, once you get this problem solved, you want to go back and look at your maintenance program. And then how, how are the seals? How are the desiccant breathers? Do you have desiccant breathers installed on the component? Is it necessary? So going back and reviewing those maintenance practices once you get the problem solved. When you're doing these techniques, once you choose a technique, uh, it's important to understand what the effectiveness of the technique is. So you, utilizing the fluid scan would be a great on-site tool to monitor how these methods are being, are, are they being effective. So if you're using a vacuum dehydration method, you literally could take a sample every hour to make sure that the water concentration is coming down. So it's a good way to use it on site versus having to outsource it and wait for those results.